Hello everyone and welcome to the Small Talks with the Lexi Collective, an initiative to bring you closer to the change makers, industry veterans and Etsy sellers and give you an opportunity to listen to their thoughts, ideas and find some inspiration that we all need right now. I'm really happy to share with all of you that Etsy Collective completed its two year anniversary milestone in August and thanks to all of you for coming along with us in this journey. Your love, enthusiasm and feedback is what keeps us going and we look forward to many more such milestones with you. We have a short celebratory video here that we love to play for all of you. Hello everybody. We have completed two years of Etsy Collective. It has just been an incredible, incredible way for people to connect. Etsy's mission is keep commerce human. And I believe that uh, Etsy Collective has been able to, uh, to work towards that mission and serve that mission in a very, very effective manner. Here's to two years of Etsy Collective and many, many, many more to come. Uh, I believe that this is absolutely uh, the best platform to keep commerce human in addition to being online on Etsy.com. Congratulations Etsy on completing two years of the collective. This is an amazing milestone. Kudos to you guys. Congratulations. Has to be the first collective which we had in Bikanir House. I was invited to the event and I absolutely loved it. I so vividly remember that when I walked into the room, there was so much energy, there was so much enthusiasm that itself became such an amazing memory for me. A DIY session at the end yeah. of the workshop, I think it's really a stress buster that you get involved, you learn and you leave the session with a souvenir. <laughs> There's so much to learn from so many creative geniuses. I'm sure it adds a lot of value and provides a lot of insight into the many, many facets of this industry. Uh, Etsy India team really took on the challenge of making the lockdown successful and informative and educative for all their Etsy sellers. The entire Etsy team, keep rocking, you guys are doing great. And thank you for keeping commerce human. Thanks, Radhika. So with that, I'd like to introduce our team, uh, starting with Sunanda Krishna, who is the PR and marketing lead for Etsy in India. The Etsy Collective has been her passion project for the last two years and something that she never tires speaking about. Ria and Radhika are part of the marketing team and the behind the scenes stars of this session. They'll also be answering you in the chat box. And Anushka is a member of the Seller Success team for today, and she will be answering all your questions related to setting up your Etsy shop. Her team has helped hundreds of sellers in setting their Etsy business up for success. And finally, I'm Ashani Mukherjee, and I'm part of the community and marketing team, and I'll be moderating the session. I'd like to welcome our very special guests, Nayan and Vaishali from Etsy shop NV Illustration. Nayan and Vaishali, through their art, aim to raise awareness about environmentalism, they initially started a 30 days of miniature art series, which has now successfully completed 1000 days. Every product of theirs serves to inform and educate their audience about climate change. Thanks so much to both of you for being part of the small talk session today. My pleasure. And with that, I'd just like to introduce the agenda of the session. Um, I'll be speaking for a few minutes about Etsy and what we're doing in India and globally. And then we'd move on to the fireside chat with the seller, post which we'd be happy to take uh, questions from the audience. So Etsy is a global marketplace for unique and handcrafted goods. We provide creative entrepreneurs with a platform to showcase their work to people from more than 80 countries in the world. We're the only marketplace which focuses on creative entrepreneurs and we help our community of sellers turn their ideas into successful businesses. We connect millions of buyers and sellers from nearly every country in the world. Currently, we have 2.8 million active sellers all over the world selling more than 66 million products to over 47 million active buyers. 
in a time when automation is increasing so much it is our mission to keep the human connection at the heart of commerce and that is why we built a place where creativity lives and thrives because it's powered by people like you in 2019 etsy became the first e-commerce company to offset 100% of carbon emissions from shipping for every item shipped in our marketplace etsy automatically invests in environmental projects to offset the emissions since 2019 we have offset over 172000 metric tons of co2 the equivalent of 20000 homes energy use for a year or equivalent to charging 22 billion smartphones and it's not just us as a company who feel responsible to account for our carbon footprint 90% of our buyers say that environmental sustainability is very important for them uh there are three major categories of goods that can be sold on etsy the first one is handmade which is anything that you design or make comes under this category which is also our largest category of sale vintage are items that are at least 20 years old in product age and craft supplies are anything which can be used to make something new for instance materials like fabric gemstones etc this is also the only category that we allow bulk sales in And lastly, I wanted to share uh, some trivia that shows that Etsy is built to encourage entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurs pick Etsy for their journey. Ninety-five percent of our sellers work out of their homes, and fifty-three percent of our sellers actually sold their first good on Etsy, which means that they became entrepreneurs on Etsy. Eighty-three percent of our sellers are also women, and ninety percent of our sellers are businesses of one. and there's a reason that entrepreneurs pick etsy it's because we believe entrepreneurship begins with you that's why we think that all the decisions regarding your shop should be made by you starting from the price that you want to charge to the shop policies shipment returns and refunds we also have a lot of seller services and tools which will help you start manage and scale your business the company was founded in 2005 and our headquarters is in brooklyn new york We started our corporate office in India in 2018 in New Delhi, and since then we have tried to engage with the creative community in India. And the Etsy Collective as an event is a result of that objective. Our aim with the Etsy Collective is to build a community of artistic individuals who are curious about Etsy as a platform and want to explore it. And we have done over 100 sessions with the Etsy Collective. uh these are all the places that we have done these sessions offline and i'd love to show you a small video of the etsy collective to give you a glimpse of the experience and what we have in store for you hopefully not too far into the future first steps i took which brought my uh, passion out of just seeing a passion and into something which could give me you know actual money the ease with which anybody today can take any skill they have and monetize that and turn it into a brand which is amazing it means that anybody who has a skill can make it more than just a hobby not just about selling etsy is really about building a community of creative people and what we've done in india is since last year is that we try through the etsy collective to meet with different creative people in different parts of the country so so far we've done about 32 collectives almost all the bigger cities we've covered and now we aim to go to the smaller cities and interact with creative people it was great uh, quite informative it was worth it It's always good to be around Etsy people and the entire communities. People are very welcoming, and uh, this uh, workshop, uh, everything was good. <laughs> So 
So Nan and Vishali, I'd love it if you could start by telling us a little bit about your background and if you come from a design background. So yeah, we do come from a design background. So I'm from a interior design graduate. And I have learned 2D and 3D animation, also VFX specialist. And now we are a wildlife yeah, artist. Yeah, me is a wildlife artist. So we are completely yeah. diverted from what we have started off. Yeah. That's amazing. So. What was the thought that made you start NB Illustration and what is the message that you want to share through your art? So initially when we started our venture, uh, it was paper cut artworks. At that point of time, the conservation part in the venture wasn't there. So we used to make custom portraits and different kind of paper artworks. But then in 2017, there was a time when we were sitting near a water canal near our studio and we saw a yellow bird uh, like flew by, flew by yes. and, and we actually yeah, after like four like three or four days we following the same bird every day we went the same place and following that same bird but um, like while that journey we found too many beautiful birds around us which people don't know about them so yeah and we always been into the miniatures so we used to work uh, like for two years we used to work in like miniature industry yeah. so after that we decided let's make everyday project so every day we make one wonderful bird from like india all around the world so then uh, like then we put it on social media so people get to know about the particular species and the current scenario and the situation so yeah that was the idea behind yeah. thousand days series actually it started with 30 days 30 days yeah, and then extended we extended it to the 1000 days yeah. now we're done with it it's a month and four days now we yeah. have completed that's amazing i i think um so we team would be sharing your etsy shop um, link in the in the chat box and the shop is incredible and even through the session, we'll be looking at some of your works. I really look forward to that. Can you tell me a little bit about why did you choose to sell online and on Etsy specifically, and how has been how has your experience been on Etsy? So Etsy was the first marketplace we started selling on. So yeah, yeah it was in 2016 we opened a shop on Etsy, and the experience has been wonderful. Yeah, so actually, uh, we never thought about selling online, but it's it's just the only platform where we can sell. This is a wonderful platform where we actually uh, find beautiful buyers. Actually, they connect to your work. They buy something you make with like heart and love and your hard work. So yeah, it's see, it's the only place I can say we can sell because whatever we create, actually, we not create a like products. We add, just create yeah, like a wonderful not, art and people really connect to it. So yeah, that's the only platform which will like provide us a wonderful buyers and a rich, like global rich of to our work. So yeah, that's why we choose Etsy. Etsy. For our, yeah. For a, like as a platform because yes, the whole experience on Etsy has always been very supportive and the buyers and we never had any issues till now. It's four years down the line and yes, it's great. That's wonderful. I'm so happy that you uh, found Etsy as a platform that, and you found appreciative buyers on Etsy. That's always our mission. So, uh, knowing that you both are involved in the creative process, how did you divide the roles between yourselves? Okay, that's a very strict mm -hmm. rules about it. Like, discipline is the key for a successful team, as I mentioned. So, basically, I am the one who is responsible for paper cutting and photography. So, that's two of my specialty and. I, uh, yeah, I do painting and the research part. I find all the different species and the strategies and the, obviously how we're going to put hashtags yeah. and all. So she's the so, one who handles uh, marketing. Yeah, so marketing uh, and painting I handle and I handle a uh, paper cut. And uh, whatever. Yeah, because there's we really make a player miniature artwork. So it's so difficult to... Uh, I do it without management so yeah it's a process actually you start with the sketch then we cut it in different layers then i paint those tiny layers and then we assemble it and then we photo shoot it so it's, it's a lengthy process so yeah the, the our teamwork is like the reason we able to finish our thousand days series that is a true reason of having a balance that's amazing yeah i have i have so many questions about the process itself but I'd love to know more about the Thousand Days series and how did you come up with the uh, idea and what has the viewer response been to that? So, 
as like as you mentioned earlier about the story of that yellow bird which flew so that was the main reason which drew us to like know that okay there are so many different birds living around us and we have no idea about them so we wanted to share that information with the people and social media was the easiest way frankly so we started doing by a 30 day series as i mentioned so in which we like we included the local birds the birds we used to see around but after a month we got a great response and we were like so excited and we too were, we got hooked to it it was going great so we started it like we made it a year like 365 days series mm-hmm. so basically it's for the awareness session so uh, how we work we started with the bird series which we not just bird we include animals insects and trees after that in our series so we used to make them and put it on like on our social media platform with uh, information about the particular species where they live what they feed on and uh, with some few other information about them so th- that way this is the good way to and sometimes we collaborate with the people who working on a uh, field so this is the way we actually so okay that work we, yeah people really connected to uh, every species now then we started getting messages about okay, okay i find this bird or i show this bird in a window every day so this is the only way people really connect to art and also a different species around them so yeah yeah that's the only reason why we choose to do it like for 1000 days so still there are many species that are there left 1000 days over like a tiny bit of it Yeah. but it was an awesome experience like yeah spreading this to social media and the whole process of it how people have their own stories like we had the yellow bird story everyone has a story like everyone has this, like when i was a kid this pair used to come and i got this baby and so then when they see artwork they really goes back to the memory and okay they get connected they start seeing them they start knowing yeah. them so main motto of this series is to people know the wildlife It's around them yeah. so they aware about them and they start working towards them like small small steps are there so which can change a lot yeah. of things so this was our first artwork we made <laughs> yeah this is very first like artwork first. yeah first like first january 2018 and mm-hmm. it was amazing day i really feel from 1 to 1000 it was it awesome. was beautiful journey yes yeah it's it's incredible really like i'm uh, i do have cause questions around the uh, photography but i'd love to see this video of the process uh, right now
that was beautiful the entire presentation even the music to go along with it thanks so much for sharing that with us nine and vaishali was yeah thank you so much so this is our like cake watercolor this cake. is all our watercolor so i use different companies watercolor so i can make a, a particular pigments for the particular shades of bird for birds so yeah i have to, and majorly i use like uh, raw amber which you can see in candle yeah <laughs> so this is our tool and yes paper cutting that is what my job is so i usually use a number 11 knife uh, for my paper cutting job because we cut on a heavy paper so it requires a stronger blade and the whole process depends on your patience and your steady hands if you are not able to consult and the precision will never come so it's like practice and while doing this for the whole series every next day was an improvement because the hand was moving every day so if i say if someone is picking up a paper knife yes start doing it slowly and steadily and then you can achieve whatever details and precision you can that you want so little journey we look at it <laughs> so uh, you know using art as catalyst for social awareness is such a powerful tool but how do you manage to communicate this through your etsy shop and your social media so basically as we mentioned earlier we really whenever we put a post so it has an information a bio about the particular species about what they like where they are found what is their behavior small small bits of information sometimes some facts so that is how people are able to connect they are able to know and then the art acts as like a marketing thing if i can say for nature they see the artwork they are like okay what it is and then they read they will get to know if they are interested they will research more about it but that is how we demonstrate we showcase our work and after that part comes the etsy so then we divert our buyer like the or viewers to our shop if they are interested in buying the that art yeah. and etsy also whenever some order came or before that like buyers always come with a story they really connect to the particular bird or yeah. animal so they have so it's a whole process or they have some connection they have like the bird used to come on their windows or something like that and then they buy the particular bird so they always buy a memory from us they always like put them like on their wall and all this around them for the some happy memories so yeah that is how people really connected to it like on instagram or other platform in social media platforms or etsy so in the next slide is the will be hard yeah now here you can see So okay, that's a chimpanzee for chip, world chimpanzee day. We have the art for you. Yeah, this. so here is the all information. And there are like detailed photos. So those are detailed photos. Yes, this is much necessary because it's so tiny that people yeah, need to know the details and more about it. you yeah. so this is how we really communicate our message so you can just read and you can see the artwork and understand okay how what is our connection with nature and like particular chimpanzee yeah. are closer so to nature we put tips. some information in words and also in the artwork we show like twigs and so we try to paint a background of the religion like same as the natural habitat so this is how whole visually you can yeah. understand the whole narrative was like this yes. so that's a chimpanzee we do have the art project here with us if you want to see yeah, yeah. i can show you too. see so this is the art project okay i can show you yeah that's so this is so tiny stunning. yeah yeah so oh, sorry it's like this guys ha this was a no, no, was it clear it was clear to yeah. visible okay yeah. So actually, th this is this was one of my uh, questions about the photography. So, like as we have seen, miniature art is all about the details. So, what are the different products you sell, and how do you photograph them to really show the scale, the color, the details of it? So basically, for photography, like uh, we use our tools. Okay, this one is our this is a, yeah, uh, custom extra, portraits. Yeah. The artworks we make, apart from our CDs, these are the artworks we make. So these are custom wedding portraits basically people get it done from us 
So this is a, a commercial part, and this and was. This one more series. Yeah, we did a series. These are quite this big ones. This was one series. Yeah, this is hmm. all. Yeah. These are like A5 size artworks. So it was a small series. Okay, <laughs> this is a thing about feminism. So these are different girls in different professions. So there are like twelve of them. All of them are on Etsy shop also. So we made it to just show how one. But there is what the face is constant in all the artworks. Yeah. We just change the hairstyle and the clothes and few props and yes, the whole personality changes. So another small project we did. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the shoot actually. Yeah. So initially we used to do a outdoor shoot. So sometimes we have to confuse it with like you know it's a photograph. It's not a art. So then we like thinking about like let's do something about it. Then we start our indoor photo shoot. So there to show the scale we use different um, props like pencil or brush or. Yeah. So basically, in outdoor, the problem other problem was that improper lighting. Like the sun is too dense. I require a lot of equipments and planning to really shoot in a natural environment. The photos really comes out very good, but yeah, as Vishali mentioned, it creates a lot of confusion for the viewers. Okay, what is the product like commercially? The this kind of photography is not very much like helping. <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> but outdoor photo shoot, I really will give a tip to anybody who always shoot in the time like post morning. Or like in the pre-evening, like not in the evening, not in the very early morning. In these two times, you get again good lighting. Yeah, white light. Yeah. Okay. This one is about the indoor shoots. So how? Yeah. See, so yeah, I can see we use like little coral for this because this is like for wild coral in creating this artwork. Yeah. So yeah, like we use like props like which connects to the artwork. And then a few cakes, color cakes, and some other uh, like acrons and all some yeah. small small props. We so basically, something connected to the artwork and the colors and the brush. We because these are the things we also have in our house, and that is how you can see the scale. Yeah, so, and next we uh, do take the detailed photos, like yeah. zoom photos, so people can see the details about it. Like, This is for a scale, huh. and other photos are for like. The details because it's a layered art, so people need to see the layer. They need to understand the details of it. So that is where the zoom photos come in. Comes in. So these are the three parts, like the outdoor one, which is the toughest and not very much commercially viable. Best are the indoor ones where you have your props and stuff, and you can do it in your convenience. You just need a big window next to your photography area, and you can shoot. And use always use your tools. Really gives a good feel and the the. Process the whole process like people can get to know what the tools you use and all those things. So yeah, that was indoor. So well, these are three exhibitions we did in uh, 19, majorly in 19, one in 20. So we did two shows in US, like yeah, both the group shows. Yeah, this is one solo show in London. Yeah, these are the three exhibitions we did. These are the two photographs of one in the US and the right side one is in Ahmedabad. That was a solo show. And yes, as you always keep saying, climate is changing, and we should also change. I mean, this is practically, and it's not nothing theoretical about it. It's really, we need to change. All of us need to change. Like we are making an art, we are doing. Like one more part, I'll tell you why we make miniatures. We make miniatures because there are two reasons. One, we really want to make people aware, and other thing is that we want to use as minimum material we can use in creating an artwork. So that is why we really make. Miniatures, and we always save the paper. Like we have the cutouts with us, and we cut from them. So the the whole process has to be like your lifestyle has to be sustainable as much as you can do. Nobody can do it hundred percent, but fifty percent also can make a lot of difference. And if all of us do it, yes, it will change. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sharing that, and um. Do you have some advice for people who are just starting out on Etsy? What are the top things that they should be focusing on right now? I'll say follow the trends. Etsy really gives you a lot of great information about it. You can really uh, like subscribe the newsletter, the newsletter, and yes, that's nice. And other thing I'll say consistency. Keep doing your work. Hard work, yes, yeah. and yeah, follow the trends. 
and also it see nowadays it, like, you can uh, in listing you can add uh, videos. videos so that's the best part for us because uh, we work with it, uh, miniatures so yeah that video actually give us like uh, flexibility to show really the details about our work so I, that's really beneficial for us to add we can add a video of the detailed video which we can add in our post also so yeah you can use all the tools the best part about it see that it provides you the trends and it has this wonderful features so use all of them and yes consistency perfect thanks so much so I'll um, give you a few minutes break so, and I'll take some questions. I'll direct some questions to Anushka that we've been getting from our uh, sellers. And we got also uh, during registration, we uh, collected some of the questions. So uh, Anushka, the first question that I have is from uh, Shalini Roy, who is asking, can we sell different products under one shop? Uh, and if yes, then what is the best way to decide the name of the shop? Okay, so um, as uh, on Etsy, uh, we are allowing only to the artists and the manufacturers. So you can sell the products which are related to each other. Like for example, if you are selling a cloth and uh, you are making uh, different products with the cloth itself, then you can sell it and you can add the videos to show uh, to your uh, uh, customers that you are only making it and you are only designing it. So yeah, you can sell the different products, but that should be related to each other. It should not be a completely different category uh, for that uh, because uh, we are, uh, we it's like Etsy is a platform for manufacturers. So it is uh, recommended to use a single category in one shop mm -hmm. that uh, is should be related if you are making different products with the same um, raw material. And yeah, for the shop name, you should decide uh, something like, as I told you, like if it's a main raw material is clothes, you can uh, choose a shop name as per, uh, by taking uh, the main word as clothes, like clothing or fashion. Um, so yeah, thank you. Perfect. And uh, Anusha, could you also um, mention the charges on Etsy and uh, what to take into account while pricing in terms of charges for uh, you know the commission and the other charges that are there on Etsy? Yeah, sure. So uh, on Etsy, there is no registration charge. So I think most of the sellers at their initial level, they face the problem that uh, they need to arrange some investment uh, for their business. So on Etsy, there is no need to worry about that because there, there is no startup cost which you need to invest. There is no yearly or monthly subscription you need to uh, like pay to Etsy. There is only a small fees which you need to pay for each listing. Uh, so as for example, as you are the makers and designers, obviously you need time to make a single product. So we are not charging on the basis of uh, time, we are charging on the basis of product. So it, there are two types of charges on Etsy. Uh, so I'll just tell you uh, the charges. So one is the listing charge and another is the transaction uh, charges, which we can say marketing commission. So if you uh, like, let's talk about the listing charge first. So if you are listing five products for each product, you need to pay uh, approximately 20 cents if you have a GST number or if you have added your GST on Etsy, but if you don't have a GST, so there is no compulsion for GST, but there is a slight difference in the listing charges that, uh, so the listing charges will become 20 cents plus 18%, which is 24 cents. And that is the charge for four month because uh, on Etsy listing uh, on, on Etsy a listing has a shelf life of four month. So this is about the listing charge. Second charge is a transaction fee, uh, which is five percent if you have a GST number, and if you don't have a GST number, that will be five plus eighteen percent, five point nine percent that you need to pay on a total amount um, of a, like if we take a hub of a month, so you need, they'll calculate the total sales of a month and they'll generate a bill on the first of next month that you need to pay within 15 days from your card, which you have added while opening a shop. So these are the direct charges of Etsy and there are some indirect charges, like obviously the shipping, which you uh, need to add in your product price. And another is uh, the PayPal charges. So that is fluctuating depending on the transaction amount. So these are, these are the charges of Etsy. Perfect, thanks so much Anushka. I'll, be, I'll probably circle back to you as we uh, get more questions, but I have a few questions for you Nayan and Vishali. So um, the first question that we have is uh, from Inakshi who asked, what are the initial planning for logistics while starting an Etsy shop as uh, the seller is uh, taking care of the shipping part. So can you talk, give a few tips around that? 
So about the shipping, like basically, first and foremost is to pack the packing part of it. So you need to like as we all all of like majorly all this Etsy sellers, Etsy sellers do we pack on our own. So the safety comes first. Like you need to have an hard box. And other part of shipping is you can really go with like there are many like FedEx, DHL. You can have a tie up and you can really work with them. They are very fast services. So that way you can do your shipping. And the packing is must, it's like better taken care of because a lot of time it happens that the package gets broken and all. So you need to really take care of that and rest is your shipping company. Okay, thanks, thanks. You're taking some Um the other questions uh, are around we have a lot of questions around marketing so i'll ask this we have a question from uh, anasuya ray and uh, monica saha who are asking about how to attract people to your etsy shop into your listing so do you have any tips on uh, you know making your listing stand out on etsy uh, yeah it's it's photography basically Photography yeah. part is the main thing. Like if your listing looks beautiful, yes, people will come. Another part is your tags. Mm -hmm. That is how you can really make your shop visible, your post visible, and then you can link on your social media and spread the word. Yes. And you have to create something unique and beautiful. Yeah. That's the most important. So both the things the artwork has to like the product has to be beautiful and yes. short. Like the presentation, presentation part of it, part is, of it yes. is the thing. Uh, can you, uh, Ansia also had a question around uh, pricing your product. So, is there any guidance that you use while pricing your product? So, there are two things. One, this basic materials which goes into making the particular product. Like what are them? You can just divide the cost, you can see. And the second part is comes how many hours you have invested in and what are the level of details in them. Both the things are, it's not like just hours. The level of details also counts. Yeah. So then that is your own, you have to take that judgment of deciding how much you want to pay yourself. Mm -hmm. So that is how we can see if you divide the thing in details and timings, then you will get to look at this much of the efforts which goes into making this product. And these are the material. That is how we can value the your, your particular item. Great, thanks so much for sharing that. Uh, we have another question from Yashwanti who asked, do you have any tips on customer service and what are the best practices in that and how do you keep your customers happy? Just, just talk to them. Just have a very yeah. friendly, like we don't, like almost every one of them, we know them, we really talk to them. We, yeah, as we mentioned before, in our case, people really connected to our work and that's why they come up. But, but the main part is we really, really need to uh, talk to them. If they require something, you really provide them a proper information about your work. Yeah. Always be clear yeah. about what you are selling and what you are like providing your services or your product has the description has to be very clear. Yeah, when you, when you also you stay are, flexible with the, uh, their, needs. Like their needs. Yeah, if they're not happy with the purchase or something like sometimes that things happen. So yeah, be ready for that and be always yeah. gentle and polite to everyone. Yes, because a yeah. bit of loss will never harm, but a one star, like half star less will really make a big difference. Yeah. So yes, you really need to be very polite and good. And I think the like buyers on Etsy are really nice. They yeah. haven't encountered any like bad buyers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yes, you need to be very calm and polite with them. Okay. Yeah, definitely. That's like a golden rule would always work. Um, I have a few more questions around marketing. So there is a question from Sakshi who uh, is asking, is there any need? Uh, I think they're asking about promoters for Etsy, but more, I think they're more, uh, what they mean is that should you hire people to write for you or, you know, craft the story for you? Should you hire for this or should you do this yourself in-house? Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's absolutely depend on your, what you want to sell actually. What we sell is an art, so obviously we can explain it much better way. But yeah, of course, if you don't have time and you feel like somebody else can write better for you, yeah, absolutely you can go for it. Yeah, and the budget, the other part of it. It is affordable, like you, you can really- That's always a affordable yeah. then yes, happily you can go. Because it's better, better to really like- uh, Yeah. If someone work, yeah. like can explain your work nicely, then it's better. Outsourcing is better. It, yeah. It's affordable. It's much better. So you can focus more better on your work. 
Okay, got it. Um, Brutodi Mukherjee has asked if um, basically someone's getting a lot of visits, how can you, what can you do to convert them into sales? No very particular answer to it, I can still wait. <laughs> 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 no, no, seriously, it happens. Uh, many a time people put the, I think there can be, they are willing to buy, but right now they don't have the enough you know, budget or yeah. it's not the right time. But sometimes it's true that they have things in their basket. Sometimes you can give some uh, holiday season offers yeah. or something. Sale, you can run a sale, you can promote your shop every time. Uh, yes. Or uh, keep on adding new uh, yeah. work in your HR shop. That is also there. Keep on adding new listings that really yeah. gets your shop up in the search. Yeah, definitely. I think adding new listings definitely gets you that search boost and. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what it means. Uh, Samantha is also talking about um, was the taxation and shipping part of your products, is that something that's complicated or was it sort of a one-time effort that has been figured out now? See, taxing part basically is taken care by Etsy right now because uh, they do that calculation part. And for shipping, yes, initial days were a little problematic. Like, as I mentioned, packaging was the biggest problem for us because shipping companies, like you just have to go and pay, so that's not much of a hassle. But really, packing your product nicely is what I believe the big, was the biggest problem for us. But now it's all cool. It takes time, but yeah. Yeah. You have to really work on it and yeah, get, get the shipping right. And uh, I think the uh, uh, I think I'll just take the last question now, which is from, it's it's a broader question, but it's from Adivashri who's asking that uh, she also has a small business related to art and craft and personalizing uh, gift ideas. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to know how uh, they can grow their business. So are there any tips that you have, especially for a personalized gifting idea, uh, any tips on growing their business on Etsy? Mm, I would say it, it Basically, social media is the first and foremost to right now because it's COVID. But normally, yes, flea market really attracts a lot of buyer in India, which you can divert on your shop. Another thing is, yes, you can promote on your social media. You can. Ah, uh, you can uh, think about uh, different products from your art. Yeah. Like prints, art prints are there, or some other small products like. Like the byproduct of what you make. Yeah. So that's how you can really grow. Yeah. Um, I actually have one question from Sunanda as well, uh, which I missed previously. So I'll just, I'll ask this and probably end with this one. So uh, she's of course saying it's such a unique product and she wanted to know the response that you got from global buyers where awareness of wildlife conservation is so much more. That was so wonderful. Yeah. Beautiful actually. Yes, we've met so many people. Yeah, now actually we are friends with few buyers now because we constantly talking to each other because we become our friends like while we, we have same interests so they buy uh, like artworks and when we it rich so they come up with the some more ideas why don't you make something yeah. like this or that so yeah it's wonderful actually yeah it was a great experience like all yeah. the yeah. love and yeah. motivation that is what kept us working for a thousand days yes day and night <laughs> wonderful it was really great Uh, I think there was one question around um, packaging uh, tips. Uh, if there is any particular packaging tips that you have around packing, especially such intricate work. Okay, the first and foremost thing is a sturdy box. You need to have a sturdy box and filling inside. And now I will really suggest that mm -hmm. don't ever go for bubble wrap. Like avoid it as much as you can. You can use newspaper. If you have a paper shredder, you can shred and put it around. Or you can get a cardboard, cut it with a knife as per your product's counter is and you can put it inside. So all this like you can have a contour cut or you can put newspapers. But yeah, try avoiding plastic and these are very good material to really preserve like, like ship your artwork safely. So we usually use paper, we cut strips, fold them and put it inside the hard box and then cover it with the paper again. So yeah, that is how, and for little weather putting, you have to use a bit of plastic, but yeah, that's the final thing. Basically study box and a lot of stuffing. That is how we can, like the product should not move inside the box. Yeah, absolutely. And especially it's going to be going such long distances yeah. to 
international buyers definitely to be very stirring about so we had once an experience when one of our product went there the buyer was not then came back but the all the way around it was really safe and that was the time we got to know how our whole shipment is being treated so that was a good experience it was one time thing but we got to see our item and how it goes there in what condition and how it comes back so it was safe so Successful so packaging. It went around the world, and the package was still safe and like completely intact. Yeah. Nothing happened. Little, like I would say, not damaged, but a little torn off. But the item was completely fine. So, it was a success. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Great. Thanks so much. I think those are that's all the time that we have for questions today. I okay. uh, thank each and every one of you for being part of the small talk session with the Etsy Collective. do check out our social media handles for updates on upcoming sessions um in the next session we have our etsy seller rajeshri uh, from the far uh, the far east art studio on the topic of a timeless appeal of traditional textiles uh, thank you so much nayan and vaishali for spending your saturday evening with us and sharing your experience of uh, building a brand with a social consciousness thank and you welcome to the session thank you so much thank for having you. us